Hello everyone and welcome to the Shrimpy channel. In this video we're going to continue our tutorial series on how to build a crypto trading bot. One of the most important aspects of building a crypto trading bot is the ability to execute trades. So we're going to show you how to execute trades on any cryptocurrency exchange account that you've linked to Shrimpy. In order to begin we're going to have to install the Shrimpy Python library. You can see that I've done that here and I've already installed the Shrimpy Python library, so we're going to move on to the next step. In order to trade on cryptocurrency exchanges, we're going to need two different sets of API keys. The first set of API keys is the exchange API keys. These API keys can be accessed by logging into your cryptocurrency exchange account and generating those keys. In this tutorial, I'm going to use my Bitrix account. So this means I've gone to the Bitrix exchange, I've generated new API keys, and I am going to be plugging those into the Shrimpy APIs. The second set of API keys that we're going to need in order to continue this tutorial is the Shrimpy API keys. These API keys are accessed by creating a developer API account at developers.shrimpy.io and then clicking to generate your master API keys. Please make sure you have enabled the user account and trade permissions. We're gonna need all three of these permissions in order to execute trades on an exchange account. Once you have generated those keys, we can begin the Python script. So let's go ahead and type Python here and then enter our API keys from the Shrimpy application. It, in addition to the Shrimpy application API keys, we did generate those exchange API keys. So you can also enter those at this time. As you can see, I've also named a variable exchange name, which I have assigned Bitrix. This will be used later in the script in order to tell Shrimpy which exchange account we are linking. Okay, great. Now that we have those Exchange and Shrimpy API keys, let's generate the Shrimpy API client. This client will help us manage the connection to the Shrimpy APIs. You can see we are inputting the Shrimpy public key and the Shrimpy secret key. The reason we do this is because then the client can manage the signing of the request to the Shrimpy servers instead of us managing the signing ourselves. This makes the process much easier to develop scripts and to build applications. As you can see, I forgot to import the Shrimpy library, so let's go ahead and do that quickly here. Okay, great. Now that we've imported the Shrimpy library, we can now create the client. So we have our clients created. So let's go ahead and create a user. So a user in Shrimpy is the way that we manage exchange accounts. Every exchange account has to be connected to a user. Although one uh, user can connect multiple exchange accounts, every exchange account must have one user. Creating a user looks something like this. So this is going to go out to Shrimpy, it's going to create that user, and then it's going to respond with a user ID. You can print that user ID out so you can see that it has successfully returned a user ID. Now that we have our user ID, we can link an exchange account. This exchange account will be linked to Shrimpy so we can easily access the data as well as execute trades or connect to different aspects of our exchange account. Awesome, so we have successfully linked our exchange account we can assign the account ID to a variable and we can print that out so we can quickly see that uh, the account has been successfully linked. Now that we have linked an exchange account, Shrimpy will automatically start collecting data from the exchange. One of these pieces of data is the balance data. So the balances are the different assets that you hold on the exchange and how much of each of those assets you own. Accessing that balance data is as easy as calling get balance and passing in the user ID along with the account ID. 
the information that is returned will assign to a, a variable called balance and then we will take those balances and put it in another variable holdings. So now that we have each of the individual holdings, we can iterate over each of the assets in our holdings and print out how much we own of each of those assets. That would look something like this. So as you can see, I have all of the different assets that I own in my portfolio, and then I also have the amount of each asset I hold in my portfolio. So now that we know how much we own of each asset, what we could do is we could trade. So we can trade right here on our command line by specifying which asset we want to sell and which asset we want to buy. We can specify the from asset and the to asset. The from asset is the asset we want to sell and the buy asset is the asset we want to ultimately purchase at the end of this order. And then we also need to specify how much of that asset we want to sell. So the how much is in terms of the native value of the from asset. So if I wanted to sell ADA and buy BTC, I can do that by specifying ADA as the from asset, BTC as the to asset, and then the quantity of the from asset in terms of the from asset. So this would be 1078. You can see above where we printed out all of the assets, I have about 1,078 ADA. Let's go ahead and execute this order. Once we have executed the order, we can once again collect our balance data, print out the assets, and see if we have changes to our portfolio. Here, we will once again access our balance data. We will again assign it to holdings. And then for each of the assets in holdings, we'll print out the, the assets and the value of the assets that we currently have in our portfolio. Just like that, you can see we currently only have 0 0.1334 ADA. And in turn, our BTC holdings have gone up. That means we have successfully executed our trade through the Shrimpy APIs, and it's as easy as that. We can continue this process of accessing our balance data, executing trades for as long as we would like, but that's where we're going to stop the video here today. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If there are any other videos that you'd like to see us make in the future, don't hesitate to let us know. Otherwise, I hope you learned something in this one. Thank you for your time, and I will see you in the next video.